nine, Havernack Place subdivision. Mr. Seth Moore is the um, representing the applicant. And this, this is a two lot subdivision. Um, I just got off the phone with Mr. Moore uh, just to talk about some things, but I'll go over the list that I sent to him for yesterday. Please provide a transmittal for extraterritorial development. Please provide contour map at two foot intervals. Please provide a letter from Baldwin County EMC to confirm power service. The plat does depict a fire hydrant that meets the requirements for the lot three, which is depicted here. However, it can only service lot three. Please revise plats to depict an existing fire hydrant that is within 450 feet of lot two or depict the installment of a new fire hydrant. If a hydrant must be installed, this will trigger a major subdivision application. If the applicant cannot provide the previous information, a waiver request will be required and a letter from the fire authority that serves this area stating the distance will be okay will be required as well. Because of the fact there is a fire hydrant here and it services here, but the distance is, is a lot more than, it's approximately 480 feet, I believe, from lot two. So that's been some issues that we've been having with the fire hydrants being 450 feet apart. So I did want to note that Please provide topography survey with area photographs with a plat overlay. Please depict a sidewalk or provide a sidewalk waiver request and depict a sidewalk easement on, on the plat or the site of its road frontages. I know the commission members have stated that if a sidewalk will not be provided, that they've requested that the waiver be included along with the waiver request and the depiction of the, the, the sidewalk easement on the plat. There, uh, this portion is bolded. This is not a part of the subdivision, so I've asked that please unbold this portion of of the, of the on the plat. Please revise the legal description to reflect both lot two and lot three. This is a re-subdivision of lot two and not a replat. And at the bottom, it says a replat of lot two. So please make those corrections. There also appears to be a shed on lot three that is not depicted on the plat. Please revise include the shed I guess somewhere over here when I visited the site and please revise the state data to include the gas provider it doesn't list the gas provider in the site data and then additional comments gas has provided a statement saying the city of Fairhope gas for Habernick place depends on gas usage it will require a county road board a gas main extension there will be a cost associated with the extension we will only connect if it meets load requirements. We do, however, reserve the right to charge for services that will only connect non-essential gas loads, such as fire logs and barbecue grills. And that's the uh, letter for this subdivision. Unless there's anyone else that here that with staff that um, would like to say anything, or if Mr. Sethmore has any questions, I'm happy to answer those. All right, Seth, are you with us just to confirm? All right, I'm, I'm gonna, does Seth got your next two as well? He does. Okay, let me give him a call, just make sure he's he's uh, with us and and you, Carla, go ahead with the next case if, if there's no other comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next case is the Martinier Place subdivision, and it is SD 20.50. Again, Mr. Moore is uh, representing this case as well. The comments are as follows. Please provide the transmittal for extraterritorial development. Please provide contour and map at two foot interval. Please provide letter from Baldwin County EMC to confirm power service. Please revise plat to depict an existing fire hydrant that is within 450 feet or depict the installment of a new fire hydrant. Please provide a topographical survey with area photograph or plat overlay. Please depict a sidewalk or provide a sidewalk waiver request and depict a sidewalk easement on the plat or the site of its road frontage. Please submit a waiver request as the site does not front upon a paved publicly maintained street. And they're also asked that, that he clear up some of the, um, I don't know if you can see, 
There are a lot of dashed lines. So we ask that we possibly do some call outs. That's a little bit more clear to read and a little bit more legible um, for staff. Additional comments, water comments. The fire hydrant is more than 450 feet from the site. A water line will need to be extended and the main is quite a ways from the site. So those were the comments from staff. And the, we're gonna need, I talked to Mr. Moore this morning, we're gonna need the waivers to be submitted today so we can meet our deadline for them to be publicized. So that's what's going on with this site. So hopefully he said that he'd be able to get them to me today. Unless staff has any additional information regarding this site, that's all that I have, unless Mr. Moore has some more questions. Let me let me see if I can relay this. Uh, Carla, I'm on the phone with Seth and and having a little technical difficulties getting in. So uh, there will be a sidewalk waiver request. Um, are they okay with the easement, Seth? Okay, they're okay with the easement. So um, and Seth, are you okay reviewing this afterwards and getting with Carla? If, uh, if it'll be recorded and posted online. Okay. I tell you what, let me try something real quick. Um, can you hear me, Seth? Yes, I can hear you. All right, uh, Carla, test test here. Can you hear Seth more? I can. Okay. Hello? Hey, Seth, I've got you on speaker, and uh, so anyone on the meeting can hear. I know you can't see uh, what's being presented, but. That's fine. And we've already made it through two, so we'll catch up on that one if after this meeting. But uh, if anyone, does anyone else have a comment on this case? All right. Um, Carly, you and Seth can catch up on the first two, and then you can go ahead and proceed with the presentation on the third. Seth, if you just want to listen in and see if okay, you have any that'd questions. Be fine. Okay. Hey, Hunter, this is Emily. Yep. If I could just read remind Seth, I don't know if he heard it, but the waivers will be due today in order to make that deadline for advertisement. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I, I, I just told him that before we got on speaker. So any waivers on the three that he's handling, he knows got to get those in by, by um, noon. So for any cases he might have. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Carla, if you want to go ahead with SD 20.51. Yes, SD 20.51 Walker Place subdivision. This previously went through a rezoning and as a condition of approval, it was required that they go through the subdivision process. Um, so this is the two lot subdivision for Walker's Place. And the conditions that I've talked to stuff about is uh, please revise plat to reflect an R1 zoning classification. Um, the site data table should be revised to depict R1 and not R2. There was just the error right here where it says it's R2. Um, please revise setbacks on the plat and in the site data table to reflect R1 setbacks because they have two different front setbacks and those need to be revised to align with what the current zoning is. Please provide contour map at two foot intervals. Please revise plat to depict a 10 foot utility easement on both sides of the interior lot lines for Riviera utilities. Here it shows um, the 7.5, but I think they require 10 on each side. Uh, the plat does depict two fire hydrants. One fire hydrant appears to be within 450 feet of the proposed lot two, which is existing here. Um, but please verify that lot one will also be serviced by a hydrant that is within 450 feet as well. If the applicant cannot provide the previous information, a waiver request will be required and a letter from the fire authority will be required. Please revise plats to place the notes that any future development of lot one may require a wetland delineation. And then additional comments we received from the building department. Walker Place subdivision has a very small area of potential hydric soils in the far southeast corner. Should only come into play if they ever try to access the site from the unopened Fleming Lane on the south side. So those are the comments that I have. If there's anyone else that's representing staff, they have anything to say, um, they can go forward and I will get with Mr. Moore after our meeting and go over these thoroughly with him as well. 
And Seth, were you able to hear those? Hear that? Yeah. Uh, the only really comment I had is that um, they got that property rezoned uh, four or five months ago. Yes, sir. I thought they got that rezoned to an R2. So, Mayor, I can't remember that. You handled that rezoning case. Where did What did that go to? I know it was RA before. Did it go to R1 or R2? It was rezoned to uh, R1. Okay. So it was rezoned. It was rezoned to R1. So I think the setbacks okay. as drawn are R2. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what she told me. It was R2. So uh, we can change it to R1. Okay. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay. They got plenty of room, so. <laughs> right, right, right. And Seth, there was a question came up. Do you know the answer? Um, I know there was some, Sally kind of damaged some homes out there. I couldn't tell if it was exactly uh, the one shown on our plat that's the, uh, on the west western lot. Do you know if that was, is that house okay? Is it existing or anymore? Yeah, it's, uh, as far as I know, it's fine. Okay. Oh, they own three houses or four houses right there, one to the east of this lot, and then another one to the west of those two lots. Okay. Uh, Hunter, I think I went by the site on, I drove by all the sites on Monday, and it did appear that the, the structure was still standing and present. So. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear. Okay. Well, thank you, Seth. Do you have any other questions on this one? No. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. We'll have those variances in on all three of those. Make sure we have them today to Emily. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go on the phone call, Seth, because I'm gonna get feedback when I start presenting another way. So, uh, Carlo can touch base with you after this meeting, okay? That'll be fine. Thanks. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Did anybody have a quite uh, another question or comment on this case? If not, um, we have had a request to hold over the next case, but just give, I know there's some uh, issues on this one that we, if we can, we'll be happy to discuss. SD 20.52 Laurel Book Subdivision. Um, so Mara and I think Buford is helping on that review. Is anyone here that would like to discuss that case? I know we have officially have, have, have been asked to hold over and if no one wants to discuss it we'll just move on okay then let's move to the next one mike jeffries is going to be handling case 20.53 and we'll probably go ahead and add uh, sr 20.04 that is an mop and a site plan review so we can kind of discuss those at once Mike is in my office, so let me share the screen here. Uh, let me see if I can take it away from Carly. You might have to allow me to take control. Okay. One second. Okay, Mike, I'll let you take over. All right, as Hunter said, this is a site plan review and a multiple occupancy project for the property at located at the northeast corner of magnolia and church street the mop is for 10 units there's eight residential units and two commercial units that are being proposed uh, with the site plan and the mop running concurrent on this project uh, for everybody's benefit and people that may be listening. The MOP will go to Planning Commission where they will either approve or deny the MOP. The Site Plan Review will go to Planning Commission for a recommendation and then we'll go to City Council for the final approval or denial of the project. Uh, just uh, kind of going over the review letter that was sent out and uh, Larry, are you with us today? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Uh, so the first uh, bullet point that we had was that the property is in the central business district and that parking is required to be behind the rear of the building and screened from the public right of way. So they're going to have to go to Board of Adjustments for approval uh, for that variance in the zoning ordinance. 
Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the planning commission is going to recommend approval or city council is going to approve it because the board of adjustments may approve approve that variance but that is a process that we're going to have to go through i do um, understand it, it's my understanding the client received that approval from the board of adjustments um oh a while back that two years ago the client went and requested a variance for the parking and was granted approval but part of the approval is to either is to act upon it within 365 days and have it recorded and with the site sitting vacant for the last two years that approval is no longer valid is how it's listed in the zoning ordinance and this site plan is uh completely different than what was presented at the board of adjustments when they got that approval at that time all right, uh, I'll speak with my client. I don't know if it's completely different, but um, there's a lot more architectural elements. Um, there is a, on I'll, the first, on the first about it. Okay, on the first approval, there was a 20 space parking lot being proposed as opposed to individual uh, garages that were there. And that 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 the issue in this sorry, this is Hunter. Um, that issue is the parking along Church Street and the garages there do take some street side parking, so the Kind of trade-off was parking was going to be provided um, behind the building and available to the public that, that so the site plan is changing just in the future that this and we don't have to wait on the variance um i think the appropriate means is exactly what we're doing now it goes to planning commission and council first and then if a variance is needed that can be a condition of approval not have the condition approval or not have the variance first and then come back with a change site plan i think it saves uh time for everyone so we can we can discuss that okay. the next item um could you provide need some elevation views of the east side of the building um trying to know it's in the fire district I couldn't tell from the site plan that we had that's on the screen if there was windows or openings on that side of their garages. Just making sure we don't get into a predicament where they're, it's too close to a proper line because of fire district or fire codes or anything like that. Uh, yes, we'll get that for you. Do you know, Larry, do you know if they have, I mean, are they, what the intent on that side of the building is? Uh, I do not. Uh, majority of its garages on that side, uh, but there is one building unit there. Um, and so I haven't seen an east elevation either. Okay. Speaking of those garages, what is the support space that's listed there in between the garage unit 104 and 105? Um, as of right now, that's where they can store their garbage cans. We have the transformer located there on the utility plan um it's just kind of a support mechanical kind of a catch-all for all the other items that y'all need all right well then that that helps handle a couple of the next items that were on the list which was how was trash going to be handled on site uh so are those going to be individual proposing individual cans for the residential units to be yes. stored as support space okay what about for the commercial units uh saying they'll all be stored back there they'll have individual cans okay uh the next item was a utility plan showing the transformer pads um it may be i may have just missed it it may be on that utility page that you did submit uh so there's one one new transformer will be in that support space for the project that, that's correct okay um the next big item is as we're all aware there's a drainage project the city is working on and i just want to make sure that we are coordinating with the engineer record for that particular project and with our public works director richard johnson uh you know to make sure we're working together so we're not not crossing each other trying to work on our project and you work on this project and try to get it done the most efficient way as possible and, um totally agree and that's one of the things um, following this meeting, um, I want to get with Richard about. Um, we did get the plans from Sawgrass. That's kind of the base that you see in the plan that you're looking at is Sawgrass plans for the utility and the roadway. Okay, there's, a, there's, a, 
Um, if possible, we would love to go ahead and get all the services stubbed out um, for um, our um, our site at the same time, so we're not tearing up a perfectly yeah. paved road. Um, and then, you know, also if we can coordinate, go ahead and getting the uh, the entrances on Church Street um, poured in um, as part of the overall project. And if there needs to be some aid um, to construction, you know, last thing we want to do is tear up brand new curbing and brand new asphalt. Right. We can completely agree. Uh, Richard, you, you see any uh, issues with being able to coordinate some of that with the project if it's approved? Well, and Larry, the good news is it looks like our project's going to beat you for a change. So um, <laughs> and, uh, that's a good thing because you can you can uh, uh, we can do that in real time. Uh, one of the things that did pop up and, and look at this is I know that a big component of what Sawgrass is on the whole Church Street, there's almost $174,000 worth of ADA compliancy issues. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we got to look at the crosswalks and all that because I think they they have some. Uh, I, if my memory is they were they were correcting some things and and we need to make sure all that just kind of comes together. And and the good news is that I think the timing is going to be in everybody's favor for that to happen. Okay. And Richard, I wanted to throw one comment out. This is not Larry's done exactly what what is needed, but the property of the north view look in that area we've got a kind of an awkward transition there and um you know you might need to see how that tapers down i know we've we've had that on a on another project in in the cbd so is there I mean, any we, on sidewalks and it's we can stand near our corner just so it's just not a 90 degree you know maybe from that tree that we're kind of ducking around um, just kind of taper it to meet up with the existing sidewalk or the I guess that's a proposed sidewalk is the, well that was is there is this here as drawn Larry there is a I think there is a sidewalk there and then um, but what you're going over is actually in Sawgrass's plan so that's a proposed sidewalk after they tear up um, the new sidewalk or the existing sidewalk um, when they put in that new storm line. Okay. Okay. All right. So that took care of the next item that was on the list mentioned in sidewalks and the ADA compliance. Um, and still on the drainage, uh, I had a comment about is it possible the drain pipe that we had running through the center of this development going out to Church Street? Uh, I talked to Richard about this as well. Possibility of maybe upsizing that pipe just to allow for some inline storage so the new new storm system that we're putting in isn't getting hammered right away with this development, try to make the overall community a little bit better. If that pipe could go from maybe a 12 inch HDPE to an eight, 18 inch HDPE. Yeah, okay. we can look at that. Okay. And Richard is a little more, a uh, little more in tune with exactly how that would be best done, and let you get with him on that. I don't want to step out of step out of my lane into the engineering world. And, 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 and Larry, what Mike and I talked about, you know, the, and I realize that by right you have this, but boy, this site's what. 95% impervious surface post development. And, you know, if there's any opportunity, whether it's in the run that un underneath the, uh, the uh, courtyard parking to, to, to upsize and, and put a weird plate or whatever that gets a little bit of detention, uh, you know, every little bit helps, but it's not, ma we can't mandate it, but, uh, you know, this, uh, boy, this is going to be a, a, you know, we're, the good news is we're upsizing the receiving drainage system, but but th this is the reason why we're having to do that. So, yeah, so, so any any increase of that pipe would be a great Christmas present uh, <laughs> this time of year. And, and Larry, this is Buford. Remember, we did a similar thing on Judge Reed's um, uh, development just down the street from there. Mm -hmm. So next uh, thing we had. Um, is 
a little concerned with the trees in the right of in the right of way of how far those canopies actually protrude into where the building corners are going to be. If we have on the have the canopy shown on a landscape plan, see, I know there's some overhanging balconies and things that are uh, proposed for the project. Just trying to see where those are, and also the trees that are on site. I got that is currently under review for those heritage trees on there for approval through uh, through the city. And right. on, on the overhangs and balconies, I'm going to need some elevations showing what the height of those supports are going to be. I spoke with Eric Cortinas uh, about that height, and typically anything that is seven feet, everything has to be at least seven feet uh, above the ground. I know there's not any columns that are touching the ground, and these elevations and pictures that we have on the screen now, I don't know if that's the exact uh style that's going to be going for but we'll need to see exactly what's going on there to make sure that there's not going to be interfering with the pedestrian circulation on the sidewalk and that concern there larry is with, since this is built right to the right of way in the public sidewalk you know have, having these architectural details you know where if it set if i think there's a couple where it's high enough like here that it doesn't matter but this is this is encroaching in our public sidewalk i think and creates a hazard but um and, and a, a section of that would help illustrate what's actually happening so well, maybe when you're walking down the sidewalk you just have the shorter people walk closer to the building that's right <laughs> <laughs> if this right, is we'll, we'll take a look at that and um get get um any clarification needed okay and we will need a hold a hold harmless will uh, be needed with the city for those overhangs uh, if the plans approved as well. Uh, I think one of the last things I have noted here is just trying to I know in the central business district for mixed use. Uh, you know, or in the CBD, the 40 foot height is there um, and I was just checking my numbers to see if I got this right. Um, if I did my math right, it looks like this uh, complete project is 4% residential and 94% residential, no, or no, excuse me, 4% commercial and 96% residential. I haven't done the math, so I'll, I'll take your word for it. Well, okay. The commercial is, the, is only 1,274 on the bottom floor. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I did that it wasn't those couple stories of commercial that were there, or if it was just those commercial on the bottom two floors or bottom floor for those two units. And that's, I think that's important because like we, and Larry, we've talked about on another project recently that, you know, the planning commission is really getting sensitive about mixed use, actually having a commercial component and, and moving, you know, I don't, I don't know where we go here. I don't know what the conversation will lead to. Just want to want you to be prepared to if that comes up. All right. Well, I, I I I think I hear what you're saying, but I mean this is also on the fringe of the CBD. We're on the outer edge of it right here, and we're trying to put more residential on Church Street side because that's what's across the street from us. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and then we put the commercial on Magnolia, which is in line with what's across the street on. From Magnolia and to the um, to the east, so I, I hear what you're saying, though. Yeah, and there may be there may be a desire to, or even a request to convert the two other two units on Magnolia because I, I completely agree with you on the church side. I think that's a great transition. Um, it just may come up. So yeah. All right. The elevation you're show on the elevation plans. We're showing that your base height is 106.5, where we're starting the measurement of height. Just out of I couldn't figure out where that 106.5 uh, average grade came from. Um, I, I didn't do these elevations, so the architect did, but their the average grade of Magnolia is 106.5, based on what he's saying there. And looking at our grading plan, if you scroll back to it. That is about the mid elevation of Magnolia. 
the Magnolia app of the street? Yes. Okay. And that that's what kind of what we're thinking because while Magnolia, you know, it's, it's taking Magnolia and then applying it to Church Street too. So we're we'll, now knowing that's what we were assuming, but didn't want to make sure. So we can now look at the, the calculations here and just the, everybody knows building height right now is not a clear definition. We just talked about it at the planning commission. Um, you know, there, I think there's a, a, a desire to have a cap by some, uh, on council and planning commission of 40 feet in the CBD, but then that conflicts with the definition of building height going to the average, uh, mean, mean roof. So it, it is what it is and, and you're going to be allowed to do what you're allowed to do. So I, we just, I didn't, I didn't figure, I couldn't figure out how they applied the average elevation of Magnolia Avenue to a church street facade. Um, that how that made sense in any way, but, and this one's kind of being stacked flats. We could almost view it as each unit as a, as a unit, if there was fire separation, but because it's not, you kind of have to look at the building as a whole. So when, uh, on building height, so we'll, we'll look at that, uh, now knowing what we know. So, and see if there's any, any wow. problems. I'm not sure that there's not fire separation between each of these units, but I, I don't know. Um, well, I don't, I don't know how far along the architecture plans are. Okay. okay. And the last thing I think I have for you, Larry, is just curious. Um, the two courtyards that are shown on the site plan, is that individual courtyards only for the unit 100 and unit 101? Or is that shared uh, space um, the complex? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you say that again. I wasn't certain if those were individual courtyards specifically for unit 100 and unit 101 or if those were shared courtyards for all eight residential units no they're for those units for 100 and 101. Yeah, i'm assuming is that open to the sky uh yes okay all right and i think uh, i didn't have any other the only utility comments i received was about the electrical transformer pad and location on it and i'll double check the drawings to make sure that I didn't just miss it on there. Were there any other comments from utilities or any other staff member? Yeah. Hey, Larry. Uh, Mike, this is Jeremy. I'm sitting here with Terry in the gas department. Mm -hmm. uh, are are y'all planning on putting gas to the living quarters or the businesses? These projects make it hard, especially for the gas, for placement of gas meters. And it's one thing that usually gets forgot mm -hmm. about until the structure is built. And then everybody's running around trying to figure out where we can put gas meters. You know, and so projects like this, you know, we need to really find out where we can set the gas meters. If y'all plan on having gas, you know, to some of the businesses or is it just going to be the houses? If you're going to have gas lights and try to figure this out on the front end, you know, and, and if you do have fire protection, you know, we won't be able to do a manifold system because you won't be able to go through the firewall and how we could separate meters at each individual structure. Yeah. Um, I will get the developer to get in touch to find out, um, you know, what all they intend to have on gas. I don't know the answer to that. We most definitely do not want to put a tap in Church Street and have a line and then not have a gas line. I have to go back and dig that up and kill that tap. So. Okay. I, I, I'm in agreement, especially with all the work going on. Um, well, yeah, and, the, and from an aesthetics view, too, if these houses are going to be facing Church Street, they're probably not going to want a gas meter facing Church Street at the front of their you know, house. So looking at these drawings, I'm not sure where else we could put them. So, yeah, if you could talk to him and get back with us and uh, let us know the plans for natural gas on this on this site. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Anybody else? All right. Well, that's, I think that's all we have. We can move on. I said, Larry, this was for the for review for the uh, MOP and the site plan review as well. Um, you know, they're working working hand in hand. Uh, so there's no separate comments for the MOP versus the site plan review at this time. And I don't think we're having any waiver requests as it's a site plan review. So this will go 
through planning commission and then through city council. So if nobody has anything else, we can move on to the next case. Okay. Thank you. all Thank you, Larry. All right, we're going to move forward with case I'm reviewing. It is CZ 20.09. That is Dominion Senior Living of Fairhope. It is a request to rezone R1 to a PUD. Let me flip over some for some information here. Hey Hunter, can I interject real quick? Absolutely. Hey, go and, and by all means go ahead. Go ahead with this case. Um, after we after you get through with the Dominion case, if we want we want to go ahead and fall back and do 20.54. Uh, twenty fifty four. The estates at the verandas. Okay, I do. Yep, I don't have a copy on this agenda. That item on this agenda. So, I tell you what. Uh, let me get through this one, and we'll fall right back to it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So this is the the reserve at Fairhope, a senior living facility that will include. Uh, memory care units, assisted living, and independent care units. Uh, pretty good uh, size development at the corner of Volanta and Reno Avenue. Uh, per the comp plan, this is, I think, a good fit. Um, I'm really excited. You know, one thing I, I like to look at it from a, a planner's perspective is, is how do the ed elderly fit in the community? And this being right next to Volanta and the youth uh, is a good fit. And, and you know, so I, I think that's a, a meets the the intent of the comp plan that has some struggles on Greeno Road, on what to do in between the commercial districts. This is a a um, let me get the total unit counts for you here. There are 148 senior housing units, um, 84 independent, 32 assisted living units, and 32 memory care units in the the main building and then 20 duplex villas that are also independent care uh, the large building is on, on the corner of Atlanta and Greeno and you transition in to the south to the duplexes a lot of amenities are being provided um, and I have spoken with Trey I think Lee you're here to if there's questions on this one right yes sir Okay, I've talked to uh, Trey about this and most of the concerns I think he's addressed, but we're going to run through those just for everyone else's benefit. Um, so I'll run through them real quick and if you can just respond at, at once, we can we can knock this one out. Yeah, that sounds good and I've spoken with Trey as well. So. Okay. All right, I'm just going to, so this is a PUD and has a master development plan and that um, that is is being put together and packaged up as one one like one one product that can be codified. Um, Lee, I have a question here. Uh, there is memory care units here that do require um, state approvals, and I don't know the status of those. But what I'd like to see, if it is still in flux and that's still a debate, then what happens if those are not approved? You know, or are those converted? Because if we wind up with just all independent care units, where we're looking at apartments, so if those convert to assisted living, or maybe they've already got that, I don't want to get in the middle of that conversation. Just like to know a status. Yes, sir. Um, whether with Dominion is on this call as well, I believe. If he can address that, we can talk about it at this time. If not, we can provide a um, you know written response back to your comments um okay go ahead that. and get a written response but let, let's talk about it if we need to and withers with dominion partners uh thank you for being here can you do you have audio and can you talk let's see let me make sure you're you might be if you're on a phone call i think you've got to press star six i'm that's to unmute. And if anyone in IT there can confirm that. Withers received the invite, but I don't see him on the 
the call. So, so let's see. Okay, so, I think I'm. Can you guys hear me? I'm no longer muted Can't now. I'm here. here. There we go. Hey, good. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I am on a on a phone call. I can touch on the memory care. So that's mm -hmm. run through a certificate of need through the state, um, and it's just a, it's a process that you have to go through. We have filed an LOI and have been we were told within the last couple of weeks that there is no one that is fighting for the the actual memory care beds in baldwin county uh, with us so that's that's good news um, for us so recently the state adopted a new health plan that allowed for 334 i think additional beds in baldwin county alone um, we're applying for 32 of them, obviously, just for the memory care. Um, so we've got uh, a lot of good news headed our way as far as receiving the CON for the memory care beds. Um, that process usually takes anywhere from 60 to 120 days once we file the formal application, uh, which the formal application is filed uh, or cannot be filed until you have the correct zoning for the property. Okay. All right. Um, it may be something we just, uh, since this is a PUD, kind of talk about uh, a little in, in a reply, what backup plan and hoping you get it and all, but that kind of changes that dynamic. So maybe even the backup plan is those transition to assisted living, or maybe your backup plan, it, it's not feasible for you um, if you don't get those, but just, just address it that, simple simple comment on on what to do sure. will sure. be likely um just to touch on that likely the backup plan would be uh convert those to assisted living um and then refile later for um uh, for memory care and convert those to memory care beds uh, okay. later I, I guess we would keep trying but we would build it and just convert them convert build them as assisted living and then convert them to um, memory care once we got the CON. Okay. That, that sounds great. And that's preferred method from us. So we'll, we'll keep moving. Um, landscape plans. Uh, there is a 20 foot green space requirement along Valenta and Greeno. Um, and, and there are some buffers against the adjacent and potentially abutting residential property. So uh, I know we've already talked about that and revisions are already in the works, Lee. If you, unless you have anything to add, we can move forward. No, um, we just keep it short and sweet. We're going to revise that, move those parking spaces off the land to um, everything else has been addressed. Okay. All right. Um, utilities on site. There are, um, this is a PUD, so we won't get into too much technical view on utilities and drainage. Uh, we're going to look at each one individually real quick. Uh, sanitary sewer is not available to service this size. And I know there's already a couple of options being looked at. So just want to make sure Jason, you are in the loop on this and having conversations. Langley. I'm here. Um, I, I know, I know we might, there was a couple of potential options they were looking at, and there might be another one because of what's happening to the north on Greeno and the sewer connection there. But at this phase, we're just kind of highlighting that there is an issue. And as we move forward, this will trigger an MOP in the future where the technical reviews can can happen. And I just want to make sure the conversations are have started. So introductions are made and Lee and, and Trey can talk to you in the future about what their options are, if you're okay with that. Yes. Yes. They can call me anytime. Okay. Uh, another uh, related, there may be some undersized uh, electrical and I'm not an electrical engineer. So somebody correct me if I say that wrong, but there will might need to be some upsizing on electrical service to, to handle this volume of, or this, this size development. So just like Jason, as long as, uh, do we have anybody from electrical department on the call? All right. Uh, I know, I know Mike was where he's on vacation. So Jeremy, are you with us? Okay. Lee, we 
same same issue handle it with them uh I'd yeah it's a, it's a, get that started. yeah all that's understood we're good yeah. all right um and I'm, I'm i'm assuming i think that the streets here internal streets are going to be private hoyle there is a request to open the hoyle and that is currently uh a public right of way is that a correct interpretation correct everything within the project will remain private um whole the existing whole right away will remain um public okay uh we have discussed kind of the entrance and it's in proximity to Valente avenue and is that enough room for uh things to happen the the pud does not require a traffic study that will be mop requirement but i've already talked to trey and they're already getting that ball rolling so traffic yeah. study, those concerns i just want to know that it it's not it's not frequent but there is a there is a chance that a pud gets approved we go to mop and there are substantial enough changes because of what al dot or your traffic study might say that requires an immense substantial changes to the pud that might have to go back to the planning commission usually not hope not but just need to throw that caveat there since we're not looking at traffic right now um yeah. we've already discussed the parking in the green space um and and service yards how it's how things are going to be serviced um you know the, the conceptual plan had the service drive label but we're going to clear that up by adding some additional just kind of call out labels to our plan um indicating where the service entry and access is um then also um provide that on the updated landscape plan as well yeah there, there's a lot of information on the plan so I could have completely missed that and it's it's just to the uh, north of the memory care units probably right there where your mouse is if you go to uh, to the left plan wise uh-huh and this that, uh, I got yes you. okay so that 24 foot is a service drive those two um are just kind of some screen walls we can include some additional information about how those will look within our um, architectural narrative if that will suffice if not we could possibly include some some uh, preliminary renderings of, of what they intend those screening walls to look like for the service drives i i think more of a, a schematic approach where you're going to handle it showing you have enough room to handle it is the point of the pud and then as mops can get the details okay uh, so we'll just include some additional information on architectural merit to cover that okay all right i will while i'm here just kind of go through some other plans i've pulled up just so everybody green space is is being met um and, and actually i do believe you'll get some additional green space when the 20 foot along greeno and and uh volanta are shown that can count toward the green space requirements uh the renderings of the architecture and, and materials are on the screen now um, I did have a note and let me get back to the checklist to make sure we go in order and don't miss anything. I'll get back to the trees in a second. Um, okay. Yeah, that we just talked about mechanical and screening. Um, and you had the, the trees labeled, but the sizes were on there. So we couldn't determine if there were any heritage trees, but there are um any trees inch dbh uh let us know and put it on the tree uh plan and how you're going to handle those uh the we've already talked about the tree ordinance in the green space and buffer areas real quick um, on that i was talking with um the Arctic landscape architect this morning and one question they had on that was on the uh, the tree preservation table uh, mm -hmm. They had a table that included the uh, diameters and species of all these trees. Were you wanting that re tree removal um, calculation table to be broken out further with some additional detail, or they were kind of unclear on what was needed to address that comment? Uh, for future reference, what what we typically like to see is where the dimension at the tree, so we can see and you know we, we can have 
how Harbor is kind of evaluated and provide some feedback. Okay. So, uh, I think the uh, the way those current tree blocks are, that dimension is, is in the center of the tree. So the, the, the demolition X is probably covering those so we can revise that so that it's not incorporated into the block representing the tree. That'd be perfect. That would be perfect. All right, uh, monument sign, you, that's a pretty clear note. Either it's going to meet the sign ordinance, you're going to have an alternative plan. If you do have an alternative plan for signage, it, in the PED is where it would be appropriate and save you some time in the future. Um, there were signs from McGrady Soils on the site. Uh, we received a wetland assessment report, and I know this is already being worked on, but for everybody else concerned that might see that in the review documents, um, I was very uncomfortable with the, and this was unusual for from seeing this. We've seen a lot of wetland assessment reports from, from this agency, and to, to push this determination on the ice was, was uh, gave me a little queasiness. So that's being revised and handled, I believe. Is that correctly? That's correct. It's already been revised and it'll be included in our revised pack to y'all next week. Okay. All right. And the only last comment is just administrative, getting the, the um, master development plan kind of wrapped up. We, we, like to see individual plans it saves you time but now we got to get for the meeting packaged up in one and that's already started uh so so really nothing to follow up on there does anyone else on staff have any questions or comments on this project okay i think y'all done a great job uh addressing these we we didn't have too many things and what what we did talk about were relatively minor so Thank y'all for, for the comprehensiveness to handle this. So we'll move forward or back, actually back. Uh, Buford, do you wanna, do you wanna handle, I, I don't have that item on my agenda. So what was it, 20.54? It's 20.54 and we added this to the agenda because this is a village subdivision and the village subdivision the village subdivision site plan approval was approved last Thursday at the, uh, the the November Planning Commission meeting. And so we've added this one to the agenda. This is the preliminary plat for phase one of that subdivision. And if y'all will bear with me now that Hunter has unshared, let me pull up what we have here. And so to help everyone get their bearings, we'll start with this drawing. And this uh, development is at the just east of the intersection of state highways 181 and 104. And if you look at the drawing on screen right here, and this is a busy, this is a bit of a complicated drawing, so I'll kind of step you through it. There are 14 lots requested for approval in phase one. This is the verandas. And the eastern portion over here that you're seeing right here, I hope everyone can see this okay. This is phase two and phase four of the existing Verandas Village subdivision that has been built and is fully engaged with home construction. This area over here originally was approved as phase one and phase three of the Verandas Village subdivision. And that village subdivision has been amended to what is now the estates at the Verandas. And so the prior phase one and phase three was rendered null, void, and no effect by the approval of the estates at the verandas. Now the area right in here, future development, all of that will be phase two that will come at a future time. So we have phase one in this area right here. Um, to refresh everyone's memory, the village subdivision process is a uh, similar to a PUD, but it is in the unzoned areas. So it allows departures from the subdivision regulations in various ways. This is a bit of a complicated development. And, uh, and I think we've got our Dewberry team on board with us. Really, there's really three issues from the review. A majority of the review comments were your normal, typical review comments that we see on any subdivision. So unless there's specific questions, no need to get too far in the weeds on that. There's really three issues here. The first is pretty simple, is the community meeting that's required for subdivisions. Uh, we need the 
need the minutes of that meeting before this can make it to the planning commission. Uh, the two other issues are a little bit more technical is um, it's not clear at this time whether ALDOT is requiring a turning lane based upon the traffic impact study that was included with the application. So I'd like to talk about that this morning. And the other is there's a temporary detention pond right in here. And that is a little worrisome because that pond is where a future lot will be in phase two. So I'm curious about how that thing is going to be decommissioned. Um, I'll turn it over to the Dewberry team for those three items and we can work our way through it and then address any other questions they have. Hey, good morning, guys. This is Casey Hill with Dewberry. Um, I'm here with Justin Britt um, on a separate line, but um, regarding your major concerns, um, we'll work on getting the community meeting accomplished prior to um, the 19th. Um, as for the other two, Justin might be more suited to address them. Um, so I'll let Justin go ahead and try. And, and just to kind of give, Justin, just to give you kind of a preamble, um, the and for for uh, everyone else uh, on the meeting is that the the traffic engineer does not necessarily recommend building a turning lane. He did not recommend a westbound turning lane. He was a little fuzzy on his recommendation for an eastbound turning lane and basically said, ultimately, I don't think it's practical to build a turning lane. But then he made the caveat that if it's not 49 lots and the total development is requesting 49 lots, but he gave the caveat that if that was reduced to 45 lots, he wouldn't recommend a turning lane. But he ultimately basically said, whatever ALDOT wants is the recommendation. Sure, and we've deferred that back to ALDOT. I'm just waiting on them to give me an answer on it. We're gonna do whatever they say they want, so. All right, very good. Can you, can you hear me on this thing? I can't tell if I'm ever unmuted or not. No, Justin, I can hear you just fine. Can everyone else hear you okay? Yes. Okay. Justin, do you have an ETA when you'll hear back from ALDOT? You know, I've I've followed up twice with them, and you know, like Buford said yesterday, ALDOT moves at the speed of ALDOT, so um, I'm at their mercy to let me know something. I will follow up again today and give their permits coordinator over there a um, – a phone call and see if he can let me know something as soon as possible. Okay. And Justin, I'm, I'm trying to trying to kind of run interference for you a little bit. The, the planning commission is very, very, very sensitive to um, uh, developments at the intersection of 104 and 181. So sure. that's why that's a ultra, ultra important piece of information well, to have. Worst case scenario, the it wouldn't warrant it till phase two, correct? So at, at phase one, then we're fine as, as is. And at the development of phase two, then we would need a turn lane if ALDOT required it, correct? And that would basically be uh, up to y'all to request to us as in your response is, the, uh, is to request how the planning commission approves it. So that might be how you phrase your, how you phrase your response back to us is that the phase one, the request, the ask of the planning commission would be to approve phase one and defer the, the uh, defer the turning lane to phase two. Um, okay. And I think and, you, and I think you'll know how to make that request once you get some feedback from ALDOT. Sure. Um, and just a preamble to the temporary detention pond, I think Justin, the uh, and I'll ask Richard Johnson to jump in here as well. Um, and I guess the place I guess the concern, you know, is to build something build something and all your drainage calculations are built around the flows into it, you know, pre pre development versus post development, and then decommissioning it and taking it out of service and returning it to a pre development state. Um, I think the best place for that schema is in the O&M plan and agreement. That way there's no doubt it's in the public realm, what's being done and how it's being done. And then that O&M plan and agreement could be amended and re-recorded when phase two is brought online. So that's that's basically the basis of that. Um, and it might be that we need a note on the plat for phase two that that lot did contain a structure that can we can cross that bridge when phase two comes along. Um, but I think that would be the way to do that. And then certainly Richard jump in if I'm misstating that. But I think the place for that would be the O&M plan and agreement. 
And and I can say this here, you know, the, there's, you know, the operational side is one thing, and that'll be vetted by the engineering design and 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 all that. But but here's what we have to always operate from. We have to operate that we do not know what the future holds. So we got to assume that phase one can stand on its own for, for eternity, for the test of time. And we, we that were here back in 2008 and nine know there's a lot of future phases that never got built. Of course. So, so the issue here is, is how do we, you know, one uh, common area, you know, is there such thing as a temporary common area and things of that nature? So I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that, that being able to record a final plat is that it has to be recorded and exist going into the future at, in case phase two, three, four, five, six never happens. So that that is my biggest, you know, when I start seeing temporary or things like that, is that we do not want to end up with a, a development that then has a ownership issue or ability to, to maintain their drainage issue or something of that nature. So that's going to have to be uh, thought out and captured and that's that's a procedural thing not, not necessarily an engineering thing but that that is my initial concern there and and then as Buf and I talked about is that you know uh, the concern is that you have a uh, uh, you do an excavation uh, that you then use as a retention detention facility and then at some future it's a it's a field section within a lot that then some person builds a house on and you have settlement from 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 that and you know of course they blame us so those are my concerns so richard would i solve any issues by doing away with this temporary pond and we have a common area to the south i know we don't show it here but in the future phase two plat that'll be coming soon i'm sure and go ahead and dig that larger pond and ditch straight down to it along my proposed right away and go ahead and put that common area in with that phase two structure absolutely and then you could just make that a you know the, you can you could capture uh that ditch run down to that 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 pond as part mm -hmm. of phase one and uh then that way it's it's there and it's captured and it can be described and uh in the o m agreement and we don't have this temporary thing i i would much prefer that okay and that ditch run would be in a future right away so do we clock i mean in that that south section in the prelim of phase one is recorded as a lot and it would be a resub for that lot on phase two so will we capture that ditch run as common area and then break that common area back out as right away in the future or i i think i would uh, do that run uh, that you needed and and uh and label it drainage easement and future okay. right away. yeah all right yeah. All right. Not and that problem. way, uh, everything it's, its purpose has been described because after it becomes part of the right of way, it's still part of the drainage. So okay. I think you'd be fine there. Yeah, Justin, okay. labeling future right of ways, that is not a problem at all. That's a good practice, too. Um, but yeah, I, uh, that, uh, I think that makes that entire issue go away completely. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll speak to the developer about that. And if, if I can, uh, we can get on board with that. I'll rewrite the drainage calcs and and get that back over to you next week with that recent note. Uh, that would be preferable. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, Justin, that's great. Uh, Justin Casey, uh, like I said, a lot of comments on this one, but pretty much everything was very, very standard subdivision stuff. Um, and when you have this many drawings, getting the drawings, getting each of the drawings labeled the same and that kind of thing, you know, and so, you know, I try to catch all that and let the engineer know about that. Um, Y'all, we didn't go into great detail on it on this review, but what I'll do, and I mentioned this during the village subdivision approval, to make certain that the village subdivision and this preliminary platter are agreeing with one another, there may be several conditions of approval to make certain we're all on the same page. I advise the planning commission about that. So when we get to the point that we're ready to put it on the agenda for a planning commission meeting, don't be, you know, troubled by that. It's just making certain the village subdivision is all in agreement. Um, I think uh, gas department, our standard comments on bigger subdivisions will apply here. These are large lots that where 
there's already a uh, there's already a title block for the health department. So these lots are big enough that we can have septic systems. And then Jason Langley had a couple of very minor comments um, for water that are reflected in the review comments. But one thing while I've got Jason here with me is that um, if y'all had any questions for Jason, uh, he's here as well with me. Uh, no, I don't believe so. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, I believe I, saw, I gave him everything he needed in a water report. And we are, he is wanting to do septic out here, so we won't have any sewer mains running along the right of way. Yeah, I, and I think the, the, the comments that I noted for Jason in this review checklist were very routine because, like, the curb stops and some of the valves and some of the arrangements for a new water service are changing slightly as Jason is modernizing specifications, but that's all fairly routine. Um, if no one else has any other questions, any, any questions from other staff? If not, we can move on if everyone's ready. All right. Well, Hunter, I will unshare and turn it back over to you. Thanks, Buford. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Casey. Buford, Thank you, you. You have the next one. So if you want to go ahead with CZ 2010. I sure will. And uh, and y'all bear with me just a second while I switch to a different set of documents to share. Y'all bear with me just a second here. And so this is the clump. PUD and the case number will be ZC 2010, Zulu Charlie Is anyone here with the applicant? I didn't see anyone on the list, but we've got and, still a couple of phone numbers. Is anybody here with the applicant on this one? In case and, there are and Hunter, I don't see Scott Hutchinson aboard. Um, Scott Hutchinson with uh, GMC is the uh, engineer of record. And y'all, I'm going to have to apologize. My screen is not sharing correctly. Um, let me see if I can help you out here. If I can get to it. It's not recognizing my Adobe documents for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm having a little problems too. In fact, Hunter, it doesn't even look it doesn't even look like it's recognizing anything I have. <laughs> uh, give me just a second here. Let's see what we can figure out. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Hunter, if you want to do that, I'll just kind of verbalize where we are real quick. Uh, so everyone refresh everyone's memory. Intersection of County Road 48 slash mm -hmm. Fairhope Avenue and Highway 181, the northwest corner. Uh, we refer it to the Clump property. The Clump family has owned, owned that for many years. Um, it was annexed into the city as a PUD last year. We heard the case in July. I think if uh, memory serves correct, the city council gave final approval in September of last year. And uh, brought in the entire 80 acres as a PUD. And the approach the developer took was they wanted to, they basically wanted step one, get it in the city, and two, build the framework for a PUD that would be built out over the course of time through a succession of MOPs and site plan reviews. And so it had, it had an area that was modeled after R3 zoning for single family homes. It had an area that was modeled after R5 zoning for an apartment complex. Then it was surrounded in a U shape with about 16. Um, it was surrounded in a U shape with about 16 commercial lots. And so that PUD was approved. Um, they haven't acted upon it. 
uh, the case before us now is to amend that PUD. And what the amendment would do, would it would remove the single family homes. The single family homes area is was on the west side of the property bordering uh, bordering existing areas. Um, they would remove the single family area, expand the multifamily area and reduce the commercial lots from 16 to 12. And then they would have an additional area that would be reserved for future development. They didn't spell it out very clearly in the documents, but they told us verbally that the intended use of that other area would be for possibly some type of retirement community or retirement home type of use. And so the review process on this one was pretty straightforward because making basically asking the applicant to clarify, do they want to basically carry over everything that they had in the previous version, but just with the greater single family? Okay, there you go, Hunter. There you go. There you go. And do you have in your the current folder the previous approved plan? That is in a different folder, Hunter, but I'll tell you what, I can pull it up and have it ready. Uh, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get okay. it. I'll, you continue. And so what you see on screen, what you see on screen right there, everyone, is um, you'll notice they, they didn't give us a unit count. They didn't give us an actual unit count. And I, didn't, and I didn't try to go in and count every one of those buildings and try to distinguish which ones were duplexes and which ones were triplexes. But you see unit two right there. That is modeled after Old Battles Place, which is just down the road from our office on Section Street, on the east side of Section Street. And so a combination of duplexes and triplexes in Unit 2, which you see is just over 41 acres, it, they're showing a clubhouse and a, and a lake area, which is probably going to also serve for deten detention, retention. Um, then you see Unit 3 on the right, which is actually the north side of the property, uh, what we've been told that would be for some type of retirement or assisted living or similar type of use. And then you see it surrounded by the 12 commercial lots. Um, I think our main concern, our primary concern, so that way we don't go on and on about it. The biggest concern here is that taking out the single family and taking out some of the commercial is really hurting its justification for compliance with the comprehensive plan because the comprehensive plan contemplates a village node at that intersection of, of uh, at the intersection of Fairhope Avenue and 181. You take away the single family and some of the commercial, you, you take away the density transition and the use transition that the, uh, that the comprehensive plan talks about. So when we get ready for a staff report, Hunter's going to help me with the staff report in presenting it. Um, probably the recommendation is probably going to be built around concerns about not complying with a comprehensive plan. Um, well, and, and to elaborate on that a little bit, you know, we, we see requests for apartments all over the place and have to say, you know, that that's not the appropriate location. Well, this is the appropriate location and the currently approved plan, which I, I can't find, um, actually is a is a better project as it relates to the comprehensive plan uh there's additional uh five to seven acres of retail there it is a yep. more dense um in the center apartment uh living but then it transitions to uh more r2 r3 size lots and and yep. as it as it abuts to the adjacent property so you know the it it it's pretty easy to explain that, but then planning commission and council have to make a decision on where that lands. So th this is kind of the standard commercial out, par out parcels where the previous approved plan, you know, kind of integrated commercial in the, the, um, the denser residential. It's so, it's so funny. We always argue about res uh, density and now we have one that, that actually meets it and they don't want the density. <laughs> they want to spread it out. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly it, it, right. Hunter's exactly right because what you have, what you had in place with the current plan, if you go west to east along Fairhope Avenue and also along Gaffer, you go R1, R2, then you go into the new development R3 and R5 and B2. So it's 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 just a logical progression in change of density and change of use. 
and this would take that away. Um, so uh, Jason Langley is uh, uh, Jason has said that he's uh, because even if even if this doesn't get approved and they build the currently approved uh, the currently approved PUD, uh, Jason is going to try to get ahead of this because there will definitely be some sewer connection issues and Jason's already got a schema developed to make that work. Um, and Jason, you're going to reach out to Scott Hutchinson for yes, that. We need to talk. All right. Very good. Because I think we can do We just need you to help with shoot elevations to see if we can gravity, gravity this development over to Lowry drive. Uh, the name of that subdivision is I forget. I forget the name of it, but anyway, it's on the west drive. side. It's on the west it's side. On the west side, yes, sir. And it's in a low place, and there's a lift station presently there. And Jason, I think we lost Scott Hutchinson, but you're going to follow up with him anyway. Yes, sir. All right, very good. All right, uh, that's all I've got, Hunter. Um, anything? Uh, can you think of anything else I need to elaborate on? Um, the, uh, the the checklist the checklist review was pretty straightforward because it's basically just asking them to confirm are they mirroring what they had originally other than the layout that we see right here and Hunter I did and everyone I did ask them to verify what is the unit count they're asking for in unit two because I didn't try to count all that manually yeah okay nope I think you covered it all any questions on this one all right uh, Buford, you want to lead? I, I don't. I don't know if John Thomas is with us. I, I don't think he's with us, uh, Hunter. And I think that, but that's not a problem because when we go into the utility reviews, I think we'll. I think we've got it from here. Um, you want to overset? You want to just yeah talk about those three? Absolutely. So so let's see. We'll do. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll jump ahead to UR 20.08 and UR 20.08, as you can see in your in your agenda right there, 13,000 linear feet of aerial and 5,400 feet of underground. And, and everyone, we discussed that internally quite a bit. John Thomas, Eric, Richard, myself, Hunter, we talked about it um, uh, at great length. And we just felt that doesn't rise to the level of, of forcing that to go to the Planning Commission for a utility review. That that is more than more than more than more than capable of being handled as a regular right of way permit with both you know with with the in house staff we have so we're not going to push that one to planning commission. Um, and Buford, let me because this is potentially uh, it's out in the public and I'd want to make sure they understand why because that looks like a lot of of new uh, lines out there. The, Sally damaged quite a bit of the copper infrastructure and there's still a lot of people that do not have uh, service so th what is shown here is a what we've been told a foot by foot replacement uh, replacing the copper with fiber and making repairs and getting people back online so there in essence is no new services this is a replacement some lines are down right now some will just be and as they're replacing that they're improving it and, and replacing copper with fiber. So this area will be will have better uh, service in the future. A absolutely, exactly. If this was a if if this was you know you know twenty thousand feet of brand new underground, brand new services or something like that, where you know there would be a need to uh, to notify the public, you know, then that would probably certainly go to planning commission, but. Yeah, this case right here, repair work, uh, it would it would probably be burdensome to delay that project anymore. And, and Hunter, I'll actually step back. Uh, uh, I'll step back even further. We had a UR case 20.06 um, and for a small cell tower site, it turns out that is within a county right of way uh, on County Road 48, very near the Walmart Supercenter store. But that is in a county right of way outside of the city's. Uh, authority authority to review for a small cell tower site. So we'll move on to UR 20.07 for 1100 Fairhope Avenue. Um, and and Hunter, if you can if you can give me control, I'll try to I'll try to share once again. I do not have control. I'm not okay. sharing anything at the moment. Hey Hunter, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hey, 
I'm having muting issues, so I dialed back in. Want to let you know, Tim Hawkins sent me an email this morning with the revised drawings for the cell, the small cell site at 1100 Fairhope Avenue. Okay. Great. And I received and I those this morning. Okay. And, I and, and Eric, thank you. I got a copy of that as well. And Hunter, unfortunately, I still cannot share. It does not recognize any of my screens at all. I think it's actually when I try to share it, it, it captures, it captures someone else's screen. Um, so Hunter, if you can try that, it uh, go into my folder, you are 20.07. If you want to try that. Um, I'm getting there and I believe Tim is on the call with us too. Tim, can you confirm? I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I can, I can share the drawings if you need me to, or I can try. Okay. Uh, let me see if we, I've got it pulled up. Let me just see if we can, we can share it. Let me pull this over back and nope wrong one. Yeah, I can't share it like normal. Um, so I'm trying to get a little work around. Uh, love technology. And, and Hunter, when you, if you are able to, you'll see when you get in the folder, I'll tell you which one to open. It'll can say it'll have it, it'll, it'll have. Uh, can you see that, Beaver? I can see this, is Tim. I can see it. OK, I, I've got it. I've got it. Uh, Hunter, if you would open up the other file, it'll it'll begin with A-M-O-E-S. Yes, that one right there. Okay. All right, very good. So, Hunter, if you will, so uh, that drawing that's on screen right now, on screen right now, depicts the lo the proposed uh, location, um, and then uh, and you'll see that is that is near that is uh, that is near not at but near the intersection with uh, uh, Fairhope Avenue and Bishop Road. And then, uh, Hunter, if you can flip to the next drawing, Tim, and, and I looked at this super briefly after we got your email this morning, is the request still for a wooden pole? It is it's for a wooden pole just in that existing aerial uh, fiber route. You know, we're just going to attach the fiber to the pole. It'll just be another utility pole in the line. Okay. So, Tim, uh, we're, going to, we're going to confer with fellow uh, internal staff about that and as you saw in the the uh, the review cover letter you got from Eric and 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 Eric and I uh, helped all, I helped Eric author that letter a little bit just to reiterate what was in that letter you know that a wooden pole may not be sufficient okay just let me I mean let me know what, need, what we need to do well and what we asked for in that letter was what are the options and what are the color choices etc Okay, um, I'll get you. I'll get you something today. And Tim, there, this is Hunter. This question has come up uh, approximately a hundred yards away. There's a, a tower that, from what we understand, is not being used. Can that not be utilized uh, for for this and not require a new pole? <clears throat> are you are you referring to the tower that's on the back of the property that's uh, yes. on top of that building? Yes. No, I mean we looked at we looked at potentially doing that with it being on top of the, the building. You know, really a big part of the small cell. Really, the, the majority of what we're trying to cover is internal to that internal to the courthouse. And I don't. If we went on top of that building, you know, the antennas don't radiate down, so I, you know it would it wouldn't cover what we needed to cover if we did that. We'd still end up having to build another one in the right of way somewhere. Okay. And B for correct me if I'm wrong. This because it's new and our and Eric, uh, this a new new poll goes to Planning Commission and City Council. Yes. So this is actually um, uh, the the utility review. The 1152.11 utility review process is really the vehicle by which we enforce the small cell tower ordinance. Just to greatly oversimplify it. 
So you start with planning commission as far as the utility review, but then the requirement for the small cell tower ordinance kicks in, which sends it to council. Okay. And let me back up a little bit. If it, if it needs to be a metal pole, we don't have an issue doing that. Uh, I mean, the color options are whatever color you want it to be. You know, we can, we can paint them any color. So if you, you know, kind of previously when we did this, when we did the other 12 or 13 sites around Fairhope, I just kind of left it up to the city of what color they wanted it. So, I mean, we're, we can still, we can still do that. And Tim, I've just looked at Google street view and I want to make sure we're talking about the same one. You said the, the antenna that's on top of a building, there's a standalone. I mean, it, it's pro it's a really tall tower back behind the building. Or so are we, have you, have you looked at that? As that was the request. Um, yeah, the sheriff's, the sheriff's office has a radio tower on the courthouse property. Yeah. And have y'all explored the option of co-locating co there? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I don't, for some reason, I was thinking that was on the building, but that's the same one I looked at before. No, I mean, with what we're trying to accomplish getting, really, we're trying to shoot radio waves through the face of, you know, kind of the face of the courthouse. And it, it just, it, it's not going to accomplish what we need to accomplish if we did that. Okay. Okay. Buford, do you want to look at anything else in here? Uh, no. And, and, and I guess, I guess, I, I guess my, my concluding comment for Tim is, uh, for, for Tim is that um, Wade has, Wade uh, Mitchell separately provided to us the underground um a portion to bring power and fiber to it so uh john thomas will review that from uh from that standpoint uh what i would ask him is that if there are some color selector charts and then drawings of the actual pole design to uh, to uh to give to us we'd appreciate that sure I'll, I'll get something together today the only thing i you know we don't have a problem doing a metal pole sometimes i feel like maybe if you have a wooden pole route that's all wooden poles and you stick a metal pole in the middle of it, I, you know, I think that may stand out more than just being another wooden pole in the, in the pole line. That's, you know, I mean, that's not me trying to avoid putting a metal pole and I don't mind doing that, but I think we need, I think we need to consider that. I think it, it may stand out a little bit more having a, a shiny new pole and a, you know, a wood pole route. Understood, Tim. Well, that way we have that way we have the full suite of options to uh, to choose from. Gotcha. All right, I'll get it over to you. All right, thank you. Hey, Tim. Just and this look, I'm ignorant on this. I don't know, but I'm gonna ask the question anyway. Right about this location, there is a parking light pole, and I have seen small sales co-locating on those there are options for that is that feasible here i mean it's all almost well you can see it right here on this plan i mean that's a there is potential to do that we would that pole you know i went and looked at those poles i don't they wouldn't hold it we'd have to replace it with a different light pole but you know light light poles are a possibility we'd have to you know obtain the easements from the from the county and whatnot okay I mean, we just kind of felt it was maybe not necessarily easier, but just, you know, going in an existing pole line was, was, you know, it was kind of the way to go on this, but. Okay. All right. Well, th thanks for entertaining my, my question. What we try, you know, what we try to do was go on an actual pole that's already there. And unfortunately the one, you know, there's one that's directly in front of the door of the courthouse. And then the, the pole to the East is, in the middle of a pile of trees so we couldn't use that one either that was really our goal okay all right any other questions all right well thank you tim i appreciate you uh being being on the call with us uh, and being patient <laughs> as yeah, we get no to this at this point um no and i'll send you that need, Okay. Thank you. Do we need to discuss any old business? Uh, Buford, you, these are all extensions. I don't think we need to debate that, do we? 
No, no. I think uh, all those extensions, all those extensions are routine. Um, okay. All those extensions are routine. And then Hunter, we can, we can, uh, let's regroup offline. If we had any, if we had any uh, document amendments we wanted to try to put through on this next agenda. Okay. All right. Hey, for, uh, I think we're down to mostly staff and I really appreciate all y'all being here. This is an hour and a half that I know it's hard for you to give up, but it, it helps tremendously to, to have everyone here. So thank you so much. You got and it, we will now, and we'll now close the meeting and let's get busy. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good day. Motion for adjourn.